Oh, I'm not going there. All right, um, so schedule for the week is up on the board. Um, we're going to talk about the ringing guys a little bit more today. Um, we're going to talk, there's some homework for tomorrow. And I'm putting up uh, upload interview transcript on there just because uh, I know some of you are in various stages. Uh, most folks are close enough where they can do that. If you have any problems with the interview upload, just let me know. Um, but tomorrow we're going to do our writing workshop. Okay, there's um, a little activity we're going to do, and we're going to look at your transcripts. We're going to use the transcripts to extract um, to extract quotes and really to create an outline uh, for your article. But I'll talk more about that tomorrow. Wednesday we're going to do a little lesson on uh, democracy in recession. We're actually going to look at the results of the news media survey. And uh, we had 70 participants, which I actually think is a pretty good number. Um, and so we'll look at that and we'll see like uh, in a little bit of the ring of guide as well. And this will make more sense after today. But uh, is the media working? And then uh, we're going to review the telos, or the telos, on Thursday. And uh, on Friday, we're going to do a little activity on some things in the news uh, and take a quick vocab quiz, which I'll talk more about uh, when we go into telos review. OK? Uh, so that's our week at a glance. Um, today, we're going to begin that process of using vocab to talk about moral dilemmas. Uh, but here's what I got, okay? So we talked about this a little bit on Zoom uh, last week. Well, we're going to have, uh, there's two options, okay? We're going to partner up. Uh, we'll just go here, 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 here. Uh, we'll do these three, sound good? Okay? Uh, and I want you to come up with three justifications or three arguments to pick which superpower you would prefer. Flying or invisibility. Now, for flying, you can fly up to a thousand miles per hour, carrying what only uh, you can carry regularly. Stay inside the atmosphere, so you can't go uh, into space. Uh, or you can be invisible. Uh, you can be heard. You're wearing clothes. Only make objects that fit into your pockets or backpacks. Uh, like you can only carry what's on you and keep that to be invisible. Does that make sense? So, you're going to decide with your group the three arguments in favor of one of those two things, one of those two superpowers. Wait, so we all have to decide on one? Or are we supposed to decide on like... Yeah, pick one with your group, oh. with your partner, okay? And then put the three best arguments on this sheet of paper. Okay. We're flying. We're flying. Right down, right down. Okay. Reason number one, you can overcome your fear of Some speed, I don't know. Well, regardless, however you get to a thousand, you stay alive. That's, that's the point. Yeah. Okay, let me just get your let me get your attention really quick for uh, just one like ten seconds.
Just like 10 seconds here. I'm gonna collect, I'm gonna collect your three arguments in favor. I'm gonna collect your three arguments in favor of whichever superpower you choose. I will do it randomly, okay? So there's no names, it's totally anonymous. Um, and I will present some of the arguments for flying or invisibility. I want you to think of some counter arguments. Does that make sense? So write your three down. I'll talk, we'll talk about it as a group, but you're thinking of counter arguments after that. Cool. Take like another minute. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Like, you already know that. Yeah, do you want to do another sheet of paper? Like, you don't have to do it. You don't have to do it. Like, you don't have to do it. Like, think about that. We'll say another minute. That's going to be my third reason. Yeah, and then just indicate which superpower you're taking at the top, please, with your own sheet. Pete, you come up third? Yeah, and my third one is really, <laughs> a, like really a seller. Yeah. You disagree? Look at the third one, Kevin. <laughs> Who wouldn't want to be Iron Man? What's that? Do you want three? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Alright, About 30 seconds. Discussion. Just raise your hand. Uh, some order here, okay? Uh, let's first talk about the arguments in favor of flying. Okay. So uh, let's see this one. <laughs> you can overcome your fear of heights. That's nice. Uh, easy travel. It's cost effective. Save time. It's more useful than invisibility. Uh, it's environmentally friendly. As in you don't use petroleum. Okay. Uh, you travel faster. It's good for the environment. No passports. No. Yeah. Interesting. I don't know if that's if that would be accurate, but you're right. Okay. So those of you that oh wait one more um, travel to places easier a thousand miles uh, can get you really far. A thousand miles per hour can get you really far. You can really see amazing sights. Okay, Kevin, you so those skipped you, over our uh, best argument. Those of you that were in favor of flying, uh, or excuse me, uh, those of you in favor of invisibility, what are some counter arguments to this idea of time? I'm hearing time is a, is a good one, travel is easier. Kevin, can you just, can you go over our third reason? Because I think that would be a really, that, that's a big selling point. Okay, uh, we're, we're losing the uh, anonymity, uh, anonymous, it doesn't matter. I can't say it. Uh, but Iron Peter Man. wants to share. If you can't, if you want to be Iron Man, uh, you don't need to worry about the flying aspect of your suit if you could fly. No. Good. Okay. That's, that's, that's a fair. That is fair. Right. So, uh, so a couple of you, a couple of groups thought it was invisible. Uh, they'd rather be invisible. What are the counter arguments to this notion of flying versus uh, invisibility? Yeah, Ivan, go. Um, well, you can still like go wherever you want. Sneak onto like planes and stuff, and you probably 
I don't, you don't necessarily need like passwords and stuff if you're invisible because no one will see you. Yeah, it's interesting. So nobody would see you. That's that's a big one. I actually think the passwords would still be in play, right? Because you're still traveling, like you're still like landing in the board, but nobody actually sees you go there. Yeah. That might be a thing. So I saw Logan, then we'll go Caitlin and Rachel. Logan. Um, for both the traveling part and the Iron Man part, what if it's too heavy for you to carry? It might be kind of difficult to go long distances carrying that weight. Interesting. So like, no hold on a second. Okay. You want to go, Caitlin? Okay, to be long um, like if you're Come back to the questions, Rachel. Did you want to add something? Yeah, um, I have a question. So you said that um, you can be heard and you're wearing clothes. Does that mean that your body's invisible but you can see the clothes, or is everyone invisible? Mm. Why would it matter if you were uh, wearing clothes or not if you were invisible? Because it says that wearing clothes. Okay. Yeah, that's a fair question. Uh, how did you, how did you read it? Um, and I guess clothes. Can be But I'm saying, can you see the clothes? No, it's not. <laughs> okay, so let's say that no, you can't see them. Because it does read a little funny. Yeah. I'll give you that. Okay, uh, before we jump to Peter's point, uh, and I know you want to defend Iron Man, but uh, uh, let's talk about invisibility. Okay, you won't cause panic. People won't notice. Uh, you can go past security without notice. Uh, ooh, you can spy on people. That's a pretty heavy uh, superpower. Okay? Uh, invisible. When you're invisible, uh, you can get into anywhere you want. You're able to do things secretly and scare people. Uh, and you can avoid people you don't want to interact with. It's going to be like a new teacher. Yeah, okay. you know, yeah. Bro, like, the thing I'm saying, like, you can spy on people. Like, if you're spying on people for, like, your benefit, like, you... <laughs> Interesting. Uh, just real quick to add to the arguments, uh, there's uh, a couple more things that came from invisibility. Uh, it's easier to steal things. You can throw things at clueless people. <laughs> 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 uh, or eavesdrop, but that's what Caitlin's argument is, is saying that like if you eavesdrop, you may not hear the things that you want to hear. Interesting. I don't think that has anything to do with being invisible, though. Like, you can still eavesdrop okay. as a... Sure. Flying bird. Well, I said, we You can do good things with your spine. Like, you could, like, work for, like, a, like, investigator. Thing. How do you do that? Good. So, so you hold on a second. Out. You become invisible and then you reappear. So, do well, you, you reappear? Here? Yeah, hold on. Yeah. Uh, just, just to be clear, sorry, I'm confused more than anybody. Uh, you said you can do good with invisibility or with flying? With invisibility. Okay. Good. Cool. Yeah, what are you doing? I was thinking with like invisibility, you can hear like people if you're there for like eavesdropping, people wouldn't talk about you. So like you can hear things that people talk like the people talk behind your back. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Like Interesting point. Uh Maya, did you have your hand up? Um yeah, the part that you can like get anywhere wouldn't really work because you're saying that you're walk through walls and like then people yeah. notice if you open the door. <laughs> I think that's the problem with Harry Potter, right? Yeah, that's uh, like opening the doors, the doors creaking, and things like that. So the noisy part would be good. They or think it's a ghost. Is it saying? Say it again. They think it's a ghost. They think it's a ghost, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, well, come, can't go. So if you're invisible, you know, you just have a giant backpack. What if, like, someone's, like, on a Russian base, and you, like, break in, and you put the person in the backpack, and then they're invisible, and then you can get them out? That you wait, wait, that's good. Always the Russians, right? Interesting. <laughs> Interesting scenario. Okay. All right, we'll do Caitlin's name. I have a question. Like, yeah. if you're invisible and someone like bumps into you, are you still invisible, or is like going to go away? Oh, uh, it's a fair question. I was thinking of like Harry Potter, the cloak of invisibility cloak. 
So like, if somebody bumps into Harry Potter, you feel it, but you're still wearing a cloak. Yeah. And you'd be like, wait, what's going on? Okay, so um, I want to, uh, just in the interest of time, actually, um, there's a podcast that uh, I want to, uh, let's listen to. Okay, it's called This American Life. And uh, maybe you've heard of it, okay? One of the sections is about um, Invisible Man versus Hawkman, okay? And it's by uh, John Hodgman, who's a comedian you may have heard of. Okay, and he goes around, he interviews people in New York City. There's some topics where they talk about this, but um, which is better, the power of flight or the power of invisibility? Um, he, he finds the answer to tell you about uh, what kind of person you are, okay? Um, let's see. You know, in the interest of time, I'm going to move, move on because you all had a good um, discussion on this, okay? So, question. Regardless of which side you pick, what would you do with your superpower? Uh, travel. Travel. Use, use it to go places. That, that was kind of uniform, right? Whether you're visible or flying, you travel. What else? Get people out of evil Russian. <laughs> see people out of evil Russian prisons or yeah. or nuclear power plants. Yeah, like okay, good. <laughs> that's, that, that's a noble cause for sure. Uh, anybody else? All right. Next question. Would you use this to help others? If I went through the invisibility, for some reason. Um, it jumps to uh, sort of uh, thievery. I think uh, easier to steal things. <laughs> Throwing things at clueless people. <laughs> okay, that one's awesome. Um, uh, you're able to do things secretly and scare people. Okay? Uh, there's this like elusiveness, okay? Uh, you can go past security without notice. You can spy on people. Okay, so would you use this to help others? What do you think? At times. Yeah. At times. What would it depend on? You say like at times, Nora said yes emphatically. I mean, if it's like important, you know. If something's important. To help. Okay, interesting, yeah, Kat. Um, Are you the only, like, can you like have carry someone and they're also invisible? Uh, if you gotta <laughs> sneak them into your uh, hand. Can you just like, uh, again, Harry Potter sneaks people through with his invisibility cloak, so let's say yes. How does that change your answer? Well, you could help people around. So you'd like to maybe share your superpower. Yeah. Okay, but let's. Um, okay, that's interesting. Nora, why'd you say yes? You oh, it's hard to be like creative and being a detective and being invisible and hearing people talk about things. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, who would use it to get away with things? This goes to invisibility or flying. Caitlin apparently would. Right? What do you mean, like things, like bad things, or like anything? Anything, right? Yeah, wouldn't everybody? Ah, I mean, so everybody. We're going to come back to that idea. Like someone floating doesn't really well, get away with things. Yeah. But floating yeah. at a like, thousand miles per hour, they do. Technically, like, what is that illegal thing? travel is like crossing the borders without like going through inspection and stuff like that. So like, you that's that kind of getting away with something if you're just going to go like fly to another country. Okay. Yeah. Kayla, what were you saying? Nothing. Do you think that people are that like, bad? That's funny, that's not bad. Yeah, I feel like that's... Well, I, I mean... Just, like, for fun. <laughs> if, if you throw one of those paper polygons... Yeah, tissue, Cal, easy. Oh. Easy, Cal. Oh. Not invisible, okay? Right? That's different than, than this or... I mean, or worse, right? Or worse. Yeah. We, we, can, we can, you know, talk about the scale of that, right? Um... What else? Anybody else have any comments on that? Um, having a superpower, getting away with things, wouldn't everybody is what I, I picked up on. So this last question. 
What kind of person chooses which? Invisibility or flight? Think of it in terms of morality. Well, like, from what I've heard, like, I feel like both, you can, you can use both to do good, but I've heard more reasons to do bad things with invisibility. Mm. Like, you know, <laughs> like, the reasons under invi invisibility was, like, to steal things, to throw things at people, just basically morally wrong things, but, like, I didn't hear anything like that under flying. Yeah. Okay, good. And uh, we'll, we'll come back to that. My other point. There's also like no honesty in being invisible. Like, uh, yeah. There's no way you can do something so invisible and still be an honest person, I guess, because you're always lying. Yeah, it's always a lie. Interesting. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah, so it's interesting. So this notion of being invisible uh, creates some moral problem. So this is uh, kind of the ring of Gyges, okay? Gyges is a shepherd, all right? He finds a uh, ring, puts on his finger, he becomes invisible. The story goes, he seduces the queen and takes over the crown, becomes a king, okay? By using this invisibility. How do you right? seduce someone invisible? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, okay? But here's the thing, it's a thought experiment, okay? We did the, the trains, the, the, the trolleys and things like that. And all that is is a thought experiment. But uh, this is no different. If given the power of invisibility, would you do what is right? Probably seducing uh, somebody to commit adultery would not be uh, that the case. Uh, what's her name? Violet. Violet, right? She does good. Okay, Harry Potter does a little bit of both, right? He gets in like good trouble, you might say, although I don't seem to compare him to John Lewis, but, uh, and that's the Lord of the Rings, never seen the movie, don't really care, okay? Um, it says this thought experiment was created by Plato, all right, maybe a dude you've heard of before. Essentially what it says is, uh, if we were shielded from all the consequences of our actions, how would we act? And this is that question of, would we do something morally wrong, would we be lying? Are these things inherently bad, okay? Um, <clears throat> is the only reason that we don't do bad things fear of getting caught, judged by society? So, uh, what's keeping you from doing uh, the lying or the stealing or the throwing things at people without being caught? Okay, so that's keeping you from doing it. I mean, respectfully, Cal just took a decision box to do it. That's a hard one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's like, yeah, like, that's just, I don't know. That's that, that sounds wrong, but like, you can't do it. You're making all sorts of friends. <laughs> I don't know. It depends on the person, I guess. Yeah, okay. So it depends on the person. Uh, yeah, Cal. Um, I just, I just feel guilty about it after. Like, okay. I wouldn't, like, feel, I wouldn't feel right. I don't feel that guilty. <laughs> you don't care. Okay. So there's this guilt. What's driving the guilt? Your conscience. Okay, interesting. So, like, not everybody has a conscience. Like, if you watch Criminal Minds, you can sleep guilty. If you watch who? Psychopaths. Criminal Minds. You ever watch, have you ever read the book, uh, oh, what's it called? There's a, there's a show on Netflix. Hmm. It'll come to me. Uh, it's with uh, Jonathan Groff. I'm very It's about serial killers. Sorry. Okay, but yeah, so, so let me ask you this. Are people inherently, like are they born with a conscience or without one? No, it depends. It depends on how you're raised. Yeah. Is but, that clear cut though? Is that black and white? It's, it's like there's literally like a medical condition where like people just psychopaths. They don't feel anything. Yeah, yes. Okay. Psychopathy, right? Like, like you're born a, a psychopath, but are you born that way? Are you developed that way? Is that the whole of society? Are people inherently bad? Or are people like inherently good? Well, yeah, we keep on saying that though, but I don't know that that's true, right? We're all good. Like psychopaths are a small percentage of the population. <laughs> very, very small. Most people are good, okay. This is where invisibility, like are you actually good? If you have the power of not being seen and you could do anything, would you do good? Good, okay? 
<clears throat> so Plato asks, is the only reason we do good because of who is watching and what they think about us? Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I, uh, yeah, it's like you also just like some people just want to be good. I mean, okay. sometimes like people say like, even though there's like no teachers around, it's like, oh, someone's always watching. Yep, Santa's always watching. Santa's, it's Santa, that's, that's what we <laughs> <laughs> No, that's true, and, and that's like a big sports thing of like, you know, what you do when people aren't watching is the true judge of character. I remember there was like an island run that teams used to have to do when I was in high school, and when they got behind the island to where like we would practice, and they'd walk, all the coaches would like make a make an example, like, oh, look at those guys walking, you know, that sort of thing. So what do you do when nobody can see you? That's what makes us good. Uh, so have you ever heard of Stanley Milgram? Okay. Stanley Milgram is a psychologist. He did an experiment where maybe you've heard of this experiment, where there is a teacher in one room and a student in the other room. And the teacher is giving a series of like equations and numbers and things like that. It's like, a math, it's like an easy math thing. And they're teaching the student. But when the student answers incorrectly, the teacher is instructed to give the student a shot by like a leader, a person, a, like an authority figure. And Milgram's research shows that like people will continuously add to the shot, uh, even if they hear uh, cries of pain uh, you know, like screeching and things like that. It's just really kind of, uh, it's a controversial experiment, right? But the idea is that if you can't see the subject, you might do harm to them. And this invisibility uh, is changing uh, how you do it, okay? We are all inherently bad is what uh, Plato says, all right? We're trying to act good because of the way society treats bad people. Uh, and we might try to be bad if we knew we could get away with it. We might throw a tissue box at somebody if we knew we could get away with it. Right? Uh, and this is where government can step in. Okay? Um, so I am going to watch this YouTube video on Stanley Milgram. All right? And what would people do if they were... Show. This is the heist. Oops, so, a week ago, I arranged for them to take part in what they now think is a, a piece of unfilmed academic research at the university, and nothing to do with the show, uh, supposedly looking into the effects of punishment on learning. And they believe now that this is part of their growth process. In fact, it was a reenactment of a powerful experiment conducted by Stanley Milgram in 1963 to look at how normal people can commit atrocious acts simply because they're following orders. Milgram's parents were Jewish refugees in World War II, and his pioneering work speaks volumes about the nature of responsibility. It's being filmed with covert cameras. Thank you. They're introduced to an actor pretending to be another participant. You didn't come from the same room. We don't actually know affects learning. After a brief introduction, our subjects are tricked into thinking they've chosen their role as teachers in the experiment. And can you just tell me what your positions are? Um, no, no, it's no teacher. No, no. <laughs> our subjects observe the learner being instructed by the scientist who is just another actor. This electrode is connected to a generator. Mine's okay. That's okay. Yeah, we're just placing straps around your chest to avoid avoid any excess movement. Those aren't too tight, no, that's okay. No. The teacher will read out some word pens to you. Blue. Yeah. The learner is told he's going to be asked a series of memory questions by the teacher. He will have to remember word pairs and then correctly remember them when offered multiple choices. If the answer's incorrect, you will receive an electric shock. The teacher is then taken next door and shown the generator, which ranges from 15 volts 
all the way up to a lethal 450 volts. The domestic electricity supply in the UK is, of course, 240 volts. Our teachers are given the list of questions and told to increase the voltage each time the learner gets a question wrong. They are then given an example of a low voltage shock and try and estimate in volts the amount of shock you're getting. Okay. <laughs>
subjects were told the true nature of the experiment was to see how they would respond to authority and that it would eventually form part of the show. Is okay. I can tell you that it's absolute photo. We actually weren't administering electric shocks at all. Years, years, years. <laughs> years. <laughs> In the original Milgram experiment, psychologists were asked to predict how many people would continue to the point that they were administering the highest shock of them all. Their prediction was one tenth of one percent. They were wrong. The results of our experiment were almost identical to the original. Over 50 percent of participants continued up to 450 volts. The majority of people will administer lethal electric shocks just because a guy in a white coat is telling them to. 450 volts. 450 volts. 450 volts. Okay. So, after the results of the Milgram experiment, I've now chosen my four subjects that we're going to okay. put behind. So, uh, going back here, and seeing that information, have, have you seen that before? No? Okay. Uh, it's a classic psychological study. Uh, so, you'll probably see it again. But, um, are those bad people who are, without knowing it, issuing like 250 volts or a shock, whatever the, the measurement is, more than a household would receive to one individual? Does that make them, are they bad? So the being what they're told to, right? So uh, they're being what they're told to. So they only act good because society would tell them that that, that like, like somebody was telling them to do that. And it works both ways, right? Like it works, if somebody had said do good or stop, they would have stopped. Interesting. Does anybody agree with Plato? That we're all inherently bad though and we need somebody on the outside telling us what to do is good. Okay. Why? I mean, I kind of, the original Milgram had over 50%. That one had over 50%. It, it only seems like a, a small percentage were actually questioning it. Yep. Good. Yeah, Logan. Um, I don't know if we're like inherently bad, but I think that we sort of try to do what, what will like benefit us. So maybe instead of saying they're inherently bad, but we're inherently selfish, maybe it would be a better way to do it. Yeah, maybe. But then there's also this like, sort of like glimmer of utilitarian, right? Like if helping others helps us, then, then we would still do that. But it's still, just real quick, Caden, it's still this outside external force that's telling you to do good, right? Like if you're helping others and that helps you, it's still this, like a, this outside pressure. Um, I agree with what Logan said, but like to add on to the point, like half the things that we do, like we follow the rules, we think we're good, but we do it because like people enforce the rules and people told us to do it. So like we all have like our own personalities and our own choices, but like when we're good, it's because people are like telling us to. Like we grow up like learning these habits while we're good. Yeah. Now, what were you gonna say something? Well, I I guess um like the thing with like the purge or like I guess or experiments like really not but like in that like people do bad things you know like because there are no rules like there are no rules that people do bad things yeah so as soon as we're given that invisibility or that ability to do whatever we want people choose to do bad uh, this might be a challenge to like a libertarian idea though right Right? If individuals are free to make choices, 
without harming others. This conflicts saying that we need a government, we need an outside force to step up and uh, enforce these laws and say, no, you can't go on a purge. <laughs> or you can't uh, you know, uh, just do whatever you want. Um, you actually have to think about this. You actually have to do these things. Um, does anybody agree with that? Does anybody think that anybody want to defend against that? Like uh, uh, the libertarian model versus what Plato's saying? Let me answer this question. Sorry, were your hand, was your hand up? No. Do you see the difference? Right, where a libertarian would say individuals should be able to do what they want with the caveat of like, without harming another person's ability to do what they want. But this is different. It's saying that if we were left to our own devices, we would do bad. Does anybody agree with it? Does anybody think, uh, I'm sorry, not agree with that, but think that government should be put in place in order to make people do good? So that's kind of the, uh, the, the, the argument that Plato puts in, all right? But we'll finish with this one. This is uh, my favorite experiment. Um, the character on the other side of the stage, when he 
runs up, he grabs the ball and runs off stage with it. So we are just going to have her choose between the puppets now. It does end on a good note, right? More reassurance that uh, we are not all bad. Or that maybe it's a learned behavior, right? Um, okay, so if you go to Canvas, there is an assignment due, uh, I believe it's for tomorrow, but uh, we're not going to work on it in class. So uh, it is a, <clears throat> uh, there's three questions in regard to this discussion, okay? Um, if you were given invisibility, would you do good? Um, why? Things like that, okay? So that's for tomorrow. If you haven't done so already, upload your transcript. Um, we will do the writing workshop, and we'll go from there. Awesome. Cool. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you. How'd it go, Pete? It went great. The director's cut is all right?